Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and this uh, series that I'm doing of quick tips on how to solve uh, killer Sudoku and greater than killer Sudoku. Uh, on screen we have a puzzle from dailykillersudoku.com that came to my attention recently. This is not a recent puzzle though, you can see 1st of March 2009 is uh, when this puzzle was first released. Difficulty rating 4 out of 10. Well, let me tell you, this is the biggest uh, misgrading of a puzzle you will ever see. This puzzle is very, very, very hard. Um, but I'm not going to take you through the whole salt today. Uh, you can, you're very welcome to go and find the puzzle yourselves on dailykillersudoku.com and have a go at it. But I'm going to talk about how to solve it or how to make a start on it. And one thing that's interesting about this is it it relies on some very uh, not basic techniques, but techniques everybody who wants to get good at solving killer Sudoku needs to know. The other interesting thing about this puzzle is that if you put it into a solver, a computer-based solver, uh, they can't do it. The solvers don't understand how to crack this puzzle. So it, it uses logic that sort of is human. Uh, which which also appeals to me. I, I enjoy puzzles where uh, we get to outsmart the machine while we still can. So, how would you start this puzzle? Well, there are a couple of very easy numbers that we can immediately write in. You can write in this cell, and you can write in this cell. And the way to do that is to realize that boxes, 3 by 3 boxes in Sudoku's, must add up to 45, because they're going to contain the numbers from 1 to 9. You add up the numbers 1 to 9, you get 45. And you can see that we've already got three cages here. Oops, or we have it. My mouse worked. Those three cages, it tells us, add to 37. So this cell must be an 8. Same logic down here. This cell's got to be a 3. Uh, but what now? And now things get a little bit more tricky. Uh, as always with a killer Sudoku, if there's any cages where the numbers are restricted to one particular set, always notate that. So this 11 cage, you can see it can only be 1, 2, 3 and 5. Those of you who are good at Kokuru will be uh, very familiar with that combination. Um, but now we need to think much harder. Well, the first thing to note is that we can do things with the number 45 in various ways. Let's take a look at the first two rows here. We know that these two rows will add up to 90 because they'll contain the numbers from 1 to 9 twice each. Uh, and we've got lots of cages that are almost entirely contained within these first two rows, but they stick out slightly. This cell, this cell, and this cell stick out from those first two rows. And you can see that the sum of all the cages that I've highlighted there add to 99. Well, 2 lots of 45 is 90, so we know that these ones, these cells that are sticking out from the first two rows must add up to 9. And this is our first clue as to how to go about solving this puzzle. 9 in 3 cells is quite a restricted combination. I think this will allow me to show you here. If I put in 9 and 3, there you go. There are three options. And this 12 cage restricts those options slightly further because you can see that the possibilities here for the high we obviously can't put a 1 or a 2 in this square because then this, this cell would be too large. So we can put in the numbers 3. We can't put 4 in because if we put 4 in we'd have an 8 here. We've already got an 8 in the cage. 5. And we can't put 6 in because 6 would then give us another 6. So actually the options here are just 3 and 5 which means this is a 7 or a 9. Now, what next? Well, if this is a 5, you can see that the other two cells here would have to be 1 and 3, so let's notate that. If, on the other hand, this was a 3, then you could see the options for the other cells would be 2 and 4. Let's put those in or again 1 and 5. So you may look at this and think, well this is very uh, open, you know, there are so many possibilities here. But let's, let's continue thinking. And we need to use the geometry of the grid once more, and in a slightly unusual way. Let's 
highlight these first or most of the first four columns. There we go. So you can see that the shaded area here is equal to 169. Now again, we've got four lots of 45 now. Four lots of 45 add up to 180. So you can quickly work out that these three cells here must add up to 11. But that's not the critical thing that we have to notice. We have to notice that there is, because of the structure of the cages here, we can tell something about the relationship between this cell and these two cells. Let me show you what I mean. If this is a 1, we know these two cells here will have to add to 10, because we know those three cells add to 11. But if these two cells add to 10, because this is part of a 21 cage, and they're both contained within the 21 cage, these two cells would have to add to 11. So you can immediately see that there is a relationship between the value of this cell and the value of these two cells. In particular, these two cells sum to 10 more than whatever we put in this cage. And that, believe it or not, is crucial. Because now let's think about whether or not this cell can ever contain a 1. If this contains a 1, the maximum this cell can be is a 9. That would give us 10 in these two cells, which would make this cell a 0. Ergo, this cell here cannot contain a 1. And it's things like this that you need to be on the lookout for, because now all of a sudden we start to get a very interesting thing going on with this, this three cells adding up to nine, because if we can eliminate the one from this cage, remember, let's go down here, then we would be left with just one combination for these three cells. It would have to be two, three, and four, and what's more, this would have to be a three because it, we can't use 5 in this combination. So how do we eliminate the 1 here? Well, it's not too difficult to do that. Let, let me show you. If this was a 1, you can see these two cells would add up to 12. So then we've got two lots of 12 here, so that they're going to have to be 3 and 9 and 5 and 7 in some order, which is going to force this 12 cage to be a 2, 4 and a 6, being the only numbers left. Now once these are 2, 4 and 6, this 19 cage gets seriously restricted. If we look down here, what, what can we put in this 19 cage now? Uh, only the numbers 3, 7 and 9. Let's put those in and see what that makes things look like. So now you can see we can't have a 2, 3 here. This would have to be a 1 and 5. And this would have to be 2 and 3. And here it breaks, because if we now look at row 1 again, you can see we've got this 12 cage and this 19 cage here, adding to 31, as the computer tells us. So we know that the other three cells here must add up to 14 to give us 45. Well, if these two add to 6, this will be an 8. By simple Sudoku rules, that means this cell must be an 8 but that gives us a problem. That will put a 3 into this, this cell here, which clashes with the 3 we've already located there. So, this cell cannot be a 1. Now, I know that's quite complicated, but once you get to these very difficult killer Sudokus, you have to be prepared to investigate this sort of thing. You have to you know, have to leave your mind open to the chance of eliminating awkward numbers. And, sorry, let me just go through. All of which tells us, as I said before, this, this, these three cells here now have to be 2, 3, and 4, which we have to make 9 without using the number 1. Therefore, this has to be a 5, this is a 7, 2, 4, and 2, 4. And all of a sudden, the puzzle then becomes solvable. Um, so how could you go about it from here? Well, you could remember this cell and these two cells need to be 10 different from one another. So if this was a 3, these two need to add up to 13. Well, you can immediately see that's going to be a problem because that would 4 and 9 would be the only way that would work. So this cannot be even get as high as 3. This has to be 1 or 2. If this is 2, this has to be 12. So this would be 8. If this is 1, this would have to be 11. And here again, 2, 9 is not possible. So it would have to be 4 and 7 
in both situations there you can see we had to use the 4, so 2 is not possible for this, for this cell, which means that uh, we end up with this situation here, then simple Sudoku rules, we've now got a 4 and an 8 here, so these two cells have to be 4 and 8 in some order. Looking at this row again, we know that this cell and these two cells add to 14 from the work we did earlier. Well, now we've eliminated the 1 from here. This cell has uh, many less values it can take, so 5 and 3 would give us a 6 here. Um, 5 and 2 would give us a 7. And 3 and 2 would mean this would have to be a 9. Um, but that's not possible. Uh, because if this was a 9, remember these three cells have to add to 11. So if this was 9, both of these cells would have to be 1. So 9 won't work. That means one of these two cells is a 5. So we remove the 5 from there. And now we can think about how we can make 11 along here. So if this is a 2, these two cells will have to add to 9. So that would mean this would have to be a 3. That's the only valid option. If this is 1, these two would have to add to 10. So again, well, 6 and 4 doesn't work because of the clash here. So this would have to, this still has to be a 3. So either way around, we end up with a 3 in this position, which means, and this is the critical step now, we end up with that arrangement in this 11 cage. Now this can no longer be an 8 because that would give us a 3 here, so we can remove the 8. This becomes there, this becomes a 7, that gives us an 8 there, gives us a 6 here. Now the 19 cage is forced at last, and from here the solve becomes possible. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's possible. So this is the way to start a monstrously hard puzzle, and if you can take on board all of the techniques we've talked about in this 10 minute video, you will become a very, very proficient solver of Killer Sudoku. So I hope this ho helped some of you who are relatively new to this form of puzzle. They are wonderful, wonderful um, mental exercises. And I do recommend those that appear on this, this channel, actually, this uh, dailykillersudoku.com. They are a very high standard in general, and they have lots of difficulty levels, but don't be surprised if the difficulty level uh, relatively low difficulty levels turn out to be rather difficult. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.